a popular survey of the Old Testament lecture by Professor Dana Reeves. This lecture will cover the introduction um, and basically a brief overview of the books of history. Um, these books describe Israel's history as a people in the land of Canaan. Although these books are called historical, they are very different from history books of today. The descriptions of events in these books are more often concerned with an important religious teaching about God and God's relationship with Israel. Let's go further. There are 12 books in the part of the Old Testament. Um, this is listed out. You can see it on your screen. These books are composed at different times and places, but they have been arranged in, a, arranged in a sequence that tells the story of God's people from the occupation of Canaan through the rise and fall of the northern and southern kingdoms and the return and the re rebuilding of Jerusalem in Persian period. Each book plays an essential part in presenting the foundation of Christ. The historical books illustrate the roller coaster and rise and fall of sin, restoration, miracles, rejection, and judgment. Throughout the centuries, we see the Jewish nation providing many lessons that still apply to lives today. So this is an overview of all the books of, of the books of history. I'm not going to go through that, but I'm going to ask you to pause the um, video and take time to actually read through it. And this is a nice chart that, that also I want you to pause and look at it and see if you can see a pattern of um, Israel's history. So it goes from creation all the way up to um, the restoration period. And um, then it was 400 years silent that nothing happened in history. Well, I'm not going to say nothing happened, but you know what I'm saying, nothing significant happened um, until Christ. Five great periods of Israel's history. So you got patriarchal period, and that marks the time between the time um, from before the Hebrews um, went to Egypt, a theocratic period, and that's when the nation was ruled by God. Um, the monarch period, and that of course is you know when they had kings. Exile period. There's no historical book um, during this time. Uh, but this is 70 years in, in uh, Babylon and the restoration period. And it's Book of Esther and um, Esther and um, ruled by governors, no king. However, when their king did come 400 years later, he was rejected and crucified on the cross. So here's the good part. This is the part that I love about Old Testament studies. It says the pattern of history of Israel. So let's start from the left side of this chart. It says Adam, um, I'm not Adam, Abram, Abraham <laughs> leaves Ur, and God makes a covenant with Abraham because of his faith, right? He gets to the promised land, and you have the, the 12 patriarchs. Then Israel sins, right? Hebrews are in bondage for 400 years. Then we go back across the chart, and it says Hebrew. The Hebrews repent and God saves them from genocide. Um, Israel, the Hebrews build the temple of God. Then once again, the exile. And so on this chart, you see three uh, uh, three times where they're exiled, right? So overall, you, you have this pattern that's the major things in vocabulary. Exile. Exile or forced migration is a theme that recurs throughout the book of history, starting with Adam and Eve who were forced to leave Eden. The story of Israel formation begins when Abram, Abraham is exiled from his kin and his land to the land of Yahweh promised to him. Jacob and Joseph spend time in exile and Moses lives in his whole life in exile. So we got this major theme of exile. Let's Jewish communities living in exiles po posed a challenge, if not a crisis. They lived outside the promised land without the temple. Jewish exiles were compelled to develop new ways of forming a community and worshiping the Yahweh God. Many managed not simply to survive but to thrive. Some regarded exile as God's use of foreign powers to punish his people. 
They called for the people to repent, turn back. And in this view, exile was not simply geographic displacement, but had became a reflection of spiritual, um, existential condition of estrangement from God. So what we can learn from the uh, history of Israel. Um, number one is that sin always leads to spiritual captivity and spiritual exile, which is a separation from God. And repentance always leads to spiritual freedom, salvation, and reconciliation with God. So this is important that, um, you know, that Jesus didn't just come to undo the law, but to fulfill the law. And so we have this concept being echoed through the history of Israel. All right, the second major theme and vocabulary is diaspora, diaspora, diaspora. Y'all pray for me, diaspora. <laughs> a diaspora is a group of people who have been forced from one chosen, who have been forced from or chosen to leave, or chose to leave their homeland to settle in other lands. People of the Rosebud uh, diaspora typically preserve and celebrate the culture and traditions of their homeland. Diaspora may be created by voluntary Im immigration or by force in cases of wars, enslavement, or natural desires, di um, disasters. So why is this important? And the fact that God, this, this occurred with Israel and within our historical books, but this is important also within our ministries. And this is something that we want to be able to tie together the Old Testament with what we got going on now. So I pulled up a picture of the Haitians that um, just recently were all over the news. Um, the fact that God creates nations is the fact that God creates nations. And we learned that from our previous um, video, um, languages and cultures, and determines the place, space, and the timing and time of our, our um, habilitation, right? He determines where, where we live. He not only uses the diasporas, but designs, conducts, and employs such diasporas for his own glory, the edification of his people, and the salvation of the lost. Every dispersed person and people group has a place and role and play in God's redemptive history. So this is key. So this is not just key in the Old Testament. It's, it's, it's here now and it's present. In conclusion, um, what can we derive from all of this. I do recommend that we continue to do our reading, that you continue to use the book as a point of um, reference for your sermons and to get in there and to dig into the nuts and bolts. Um, but in conclusion, the historical books provide a succession of snapshots that show how Israel, as the people of God, lived in relation to the terms of what the covenant relationship. So that's another word that, that I didn't put in the slide, but covenant relationship. God accomplishes salvation and works out his works out his saving purpose in and through the in and through time, place, and people that make up human history. The historical books are not a series of pointless events, but it is the old outworking of the covenant justice and mercy of God as he builds the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Make sure that you comment below um, and stay tuned to the next video. Thank you.